Paper Mario is a video game series and part of the Mario franchise, developed by Intelligent Systems and produced by Nintendo. It combines elements from the role-playing, action-adventure, and puzzle genres. The series consists of six games and one spin-off. The first, Paper Mario, on the year 2000, was released for the Nintendo 64, and the most recent, the remake for Paper Mario TTYD, for the Nintendo Switch. So, I'm gonna make an iceberg of this beloved franchise, I'm gonna talk about facts, pre-release material, drama, glitches, and other things about Paper Mario. This is my first iceberg, I hope you enjoy it. I hope you enjoy the video. If you like more videos like this, please subscribe to the channel and share more details about Paper Mario. Level 1. Sequel of Super Mario RPG. Super Mario RPG 2, also known as Super Mario Adventure in the United States, is a game plan for the Nintendo 64's disk drive that was first previewed at Nintendo's Space World 97 event. The game was originally going to be a sequel to the Super Nintendo game Super Mario RPG. The game was later reworked into Paper Mario due to legal problems with Square, and development was later moved to the Nintendo 64 due to the 64DD's failure and discontinuation in 2000. Mario Story Mario Story is the Japanese version of the first Paper Mario. On the Nintendo 64, the name was a reference of Yoshi Story, released years before. The name received several revisions, like Super Mario Adventure, Mario RPG, Mario RPG 64, and finally, was released in the US as Paper Mario. The name was used in the Japanese version in the sequel, Paper Mario TTYD, concept art pop-up book. After Intelligent Systems was chosen to make a sequel to Super Mario RPG, the team had issues how to make the game thematically different from the main series Mario games. Aoyama, a new employee at the time, ended up creating a rough image during his downtime that involved 3D models, but looked like a picture book transplanted into a video game with paper-thin 2D backgrounds and characters. Aoyama conceived of this art style by going against the trend of realistic 3D graphics. Instead, he thought it would be interesting to use the 3D capabilities of the N64 to further emphasize a 2D game. Paper Mario 64 on 64DD The game's development lasted four years. Factors such as Square, the developer of Super Mario RPG, focusing on the PlayStation, the game shift from the Nintendo 64DD to cartridge format because of the failure of the 64DD. Gumbaria Partner Gumbaria is the younger little sister of Gumbario from the very first Paper Mario. She, with the rest of her family, hails from a small town called Goomba Village. During the game's development, Gumbaria was planned to be a partner, but the idea was scrapped. However, there is an existing glitch in the game where she can be selectable as one of Mario's partners, though under any circumstance, the game will crash when the player attempts to switch her out. Unused rooms in Paper Mario Debug rooms are areas in a game that facilitate testing. Some leftover debug rooms were found in the Paper Mario ROM, as with most debug rooms, they are accessible using a modifier game shark code. In one of the debug room, the text, Mario RPG, is written on the floor and the blocks give mushrooms. If Mario attempts to talk to the star rod, the game freezes. There is a hammer in the chest, which also freezes the game, numbered from 0 to 7. The numbers shown are in the same font used in Super Mario 64 and leads to the chapter with the number the player chooses. Here, there are several blocks, including an unused POW block. If Mario hits it, it will just shake the screen and nothing will happen. This is an area with a Mario clone, a useless switch, and Goompa, who says nothing. This area is likely a test room for Forever Forest. This room looks like it is in Crystal Palace except the background is different than in the final version. In a strange and used area, there are Koopa who have the ability to transform into Mario's partners. The floor will also start moving in a wave-like way whenever Mario walks somewhere. This room has various pipes in the floor, which do not lead to anywhere, Mario cannot enter them. And in this room, Gumbario is shown saying the same tattle he says in the Jump Attack game. It is a possibility that an attempt was made to include more minigames in the end, they were discarded from the game.
Level 2 In the Smash Attack minigame, one of two minigames found in the playroom, Tin Luigi sprites are loaded underneath the room. Paper Mario stores all of a room's actors out of bounds, when not in use. However, Luigi is never seen in this room. The fact that there is not just one, but 10 Luigi sprites loaded in the room heavily implies that Luigi would have originally popped out of a block instead of a picture of Peach. TTYD Demo Paper Mario 2 was an early English name for Paper Mario TTYD, who for Nintendo Treehouse opted for the slightly more attention-grabbing subtitle of The Thousand-Year Door. A demo with this title, containing three different areas and the first side-scrolling Bowser level at the end of the first area, was released as one of the games on the interactive multi-game demo disc version 18 for the 2004 Christmas holiday. The demo was built on June 21, 2004, which puts it four days after the Japanese retail build. The demo contains content clearly predating the Japanese retail build. Albino Danos are white-colored variants of Dino Rhinos that reside in the Crystal Palace during the events of Paper Mario. Albino Danos were originally going to be an enemy species in Paper Mario, However, they were removed from the final version of the game. The statistics of the Albino Dano, along with Gomberio's tattle for them, still exist in Paper Mario's coding. This is an Albino Dano. Albino Dano are the guards of this frosty place. Max HP 8, Attack Power 4, Defense Power 4, Fire Attacks won't work. Their defense power is huge, so let's reduce their HP steadily using our strongest damage-dealing attacks. And used badges. The release version of the game contains some scrapped badges that can be accessed with a Game Shark or a similar device. These badges can be found in the game's data and are never seen during the game. Like Hammer Charge 0 and Jump Charge 0. Use is 1 FP. Increases Mario's hammer attack or jump by 1. Anger's power. Causes Mario to assume a dark red tinge and angry pose during battles. Increases Mario's attack by 2 but also causes him to attack at random, instead of being controlled by the player. Mario may or may not succeed with action commands, and may choose actions that are unwise, such as jumping on spiked enemies. Right on. Activates all action commands perfectly and automatically. Mario's partner is unaffected, one-shot step, and one-shot strike. Uses 2 FP to execute a standard hammer attack, or jump, perfectly. Happy Happy Heart. Like Happy Heart, but recovers 3 HP every turn. Super Get. Increases attack power by 2. Mario recover 2 HP per hit auto multi-bounce. Uses 5 FP. Has the same effect as multi-bounce, but no action command is required. Total saving. Reduces the FP consumed by every move by 2. Bagon Jump and Bagon Strike. Uses 4 FP to do 4, 5, or 6 damage to one enemy. Super Deep Focus appears to be a different design for Deep Focus. It was supposed to be a better version of the normal Deep Focus, its Earthquake Jump. Uses 2 FP. Not used any longer appears at the bottom of the screen in place of an action command. Mario jumps up and down repeatedly in the center of the enemy side of the field. All ground enemies are hit for one damage each time he lands. Attack FXF changes the sound effects for Mario's hammer and jump attacks. The sound effect is the laughter of flowers in Forever Forest, and some other unused badges that don't have any images, only a present icon. S Super Paper Mario on GameCube Super Paper Mario is a video game for the Nintendo Wii, released in April of 2007 in North America. However, the game was originally going to be released for the Nintendo GameCube, and a GameCube build of the game was shown at E3 2006, seemingly near completion with a planned 2006 release date. Due to the release of the Nintendo Wii, discontinuation of the GameCube, the game was reworked and delayed until April 2007. The GameCube version of the game is shown at E3, the game has not resurfaced since. Sticker Star E3 Paper Mario Sticker Star was shown off at various points during development. The game changed a lot, from being in the format of a classic Paper Mario game, to becoming the sticker filled, it is now. The version shown off at E3 2010 featured partners, most prominently, a Chain Chomp. The Chain Chomp doesn't have any distinguishing features like partners in the first two Paper Mario games, but it is shown to have the ability to break through long rows of brick blocks. Note the radically different battle scenery and objects, as well as stickers not seen in the final game. 
One screenshot shows an area, filled with playing cards acting as saw blades. Another screenshot, shows Mario battling some kind of purple Monty Mole variant. It appears to be wearing a crown, but it is unknown if it was meant to be a boss. Only a few images, has been surface of this version. The Happy Lucky Lottery is a lottery held in Rogueport in Paper Mario, the Thousand Year Door. It is run by a bulky Bobo and B named Lucky. In order to win the lottery, the player must first purchase a lottery pick from Lucky. A Dugan normally hangs out here, cursing his bad luck. Contrary to popular belief, winning numbers are not truly randomly generated. Instead, the GameCube determines which number to show based on how much time has passed since the purchase of a ticket. Checking within 4 to 10 days will reward the player with 4th prize. Within 25 to 35 days will reward the player with 3rd prize. Within 85 to 115 days will reward the player with 2nd prize. And within 335 to 395 days will reward the player with 1st prize. Checking the board on any other day will result in a randomly generated, non-winning number and reward the player with the consolation prize. Additionally, Buying a new ticket will reset the day count. Daylight savings time is not taken into account, as not every region follows it. If the player realizes they forgot to set the GameCube clock back after starting the save file, and they go to change it back an hour, Lucky will still accuse the player of cheating. This can be avoided if the player waits an hour before starting the game. In non-English slash German localizations of the game, Vivian is still recognized as transgender. The Italian version and the original Japanese version of the game and some translations, Vivian is inconsistently depicted as either a transgender woman or as a male identifying crossdresser due to the age rating the localizers were aiming at when translating Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door, this is lost in the English. Paper Mario Sticker Star Fans Paper Mario Sticker Star have more than 10 years release and the internet has responded by doing what it does best, mercilessly hating it. Sticker Star has been hated for so long in fact, that I've seen more than a few people genuinely asking if Sticker Star fans even exist. This is a Reddit post me explaining it, you can check it out. A subreddit dedicated to Paper Mario, uploaded a hoax about a Paper Mario port for the Nintendo 3DS, around in 2012, it is all made it up, this is because of the mixed opinions about Sticker Star. This is all fake. Level 3 Paper Mario Crash in NSO As some of you may know, there are a few glitches in the Nintendo Switch Online version of Paper Mario caused by the Lua scripts used. Most people have noticed the ones that cap the frame rate in instances such as the pause menu, the game over screen, and the lava piranha fight. One of the more notable things that was discussed recently is the entire app crashing during a game over sequence when what is the active partner. This was shown off on YouTube. Gumbala and Sticker Star in 5-1, when looking through the garbage for the spear guy, you can find a paper that says, Observation on the ancient civilization of the Chomp Ruins, University of Gomgumbella. Experience in the Origami King. Paper Mario the Origami King is one of the better entries of the Paper Mario series. However, there are fans of the series who aren't pleased by the fact that it lacks any kind of experience or leveling up system especially as it's pitched as a proper RPG experience. However, it would seem that EXP was considered for the game. A variable called BattleWin Experience is actually mentioned in the save file data, which you can open using a text program it's not even hidden. Bug Fables is an adventure RPG following three heroes, Vi, Kabu, and Leaf, as they embark on an epic quest in Bulgaria in search of treasure and immortality. The game combines colorful platforming with the hero's unique abilities as they explore a wide variety of areas in the kingdom. Battles are turn-based and make use of action commands that can enhance attacks. Like Paper Mario, this is an spiritual successor of the old Paper Mario formula you can try out. Weird Cats in Super Paper Mario Korean version. It looks like Super Paper Mario is still hiding a few secrets, nine years after its original release. In the Korean version, and used sprites in the game, which resemble cat-like people. These characters have never appeared before in the Paper Mario series in any capacity, and they are only located in unused levels as well. The strangest part about these levels and characters is that they are only in the Korean version of the game. Unused pixel in Super Paper Mario. 
The latter pixel is an unused partner in Super Paper Mario. Though the use of it was unclear, it was replaced by Thoreau on the title screen. It was thought to be used before the implementation of flipping between 2D and 3D using the A button. Okoru is an unused model in Paper Mario, the Thousand Year Door. The original purpose of it was unknown. Nobody known its existence. Maybe it is a scrap boss, or anything I not know. Level, Level four. 4 Danger Mario is a single restriction challenge in Paper Mario. In this run, the player plays through the game with Mario's max HP decreased to 5, as early into the game as possible, and equips a lot of Power Rush badges. It's pretty overpowered, which can be obtained at the Pianta Parlor. This would make Mario virtually invincible, and able to end any fight in one turn. This exploit makes the game so much easier in a casual playthrough. Berserker Badge was originally green. According to an interview, the Berserker, Anger's Power Badge, was going to turn Mario into green, since it was programmed by a Luigi fan. It is unknown because it changed color at the last minute. In Chapter 8 of Super Paper Mario, when confronting both Mario and Luigi, D. Mincio insults Luigi by calling his mustache a shag in the US version, but it was removed in the European version. Because shag is a vulgar slang term, in British English, it was changed to pushover. Riverside Station is an unfinished beta area. Many theorize that Riverside Station is an unfinished area of Paper Mario TTYD. This is because the area seems to be very separated from the rest of the game. There is no internal code of the game that confirms this, but there are people who claim that this is the case. Paper Mario references in Mario Party 5, 6, and 7. There are many references to Paper Mario in several Nintendo GameCube Mario Party games, especially Mario Party 5, 6, and 7. For example, the stars of the first game appear in Mario Party 5, some characters in Mario Party 6, and Tutan Koopa does a cameo in Mario Party 7. Flavio Glitch Basically you can do it as soon as you get Ms. Moe's. After Chapter 4, use Ms. Moe's Fish Glitch to unlock the blue pipe to Keel Hall Key early. Do Chapter 5 normally until you get Flavio. If you open Pirate's Grotto, Flavio will leave, so don't do that. Instead, escape using the blue pipe, which normally isn't available. And done, you will have Flavio for the rest of the game. It even causes some strange side effects in the cutscenes as well as in the Super Mario Bros. room in x Not Fortress. It is very funny, you can check it out. Level 5, Final Mario's House Interior in TTYD The Mario's House Interior is not seen in Paper Mario TTYD, only it shows on the intro of this game, but with a game shark code you can access it. It has collision and pretty much works on this game. It is weird why this was scrapped. Murdered Toad in some house of Paper Mario TTYD, in the Japanese version, there is a toad core mark on the floor. People speculate that a toad was murdered, or some investigation, has been done in this house. The mark was removed in other versions, it is not known why, probably censorship. The real reason for using toads. Paper Mario, the Origami King's producer Kensuke Tanabe stated that it is no longer possible to create original characters or modify classic Super Mario characters from the universe. Tanabe claimed that this new policy was established since the release of Paper Mario Sticker Star in 2012. This change in policy came with no explanation as to why no original characters are allowed, but it explains why there is a severe lack of original characters in Paper Mario The Origami King. Anything crashes Paper Mario. There is a meme around Paper Mario that some YouTubers have so many ways to crash the game. It's insane. This game has so many errors that make the game crash. And it shows this creepy code screen. Anything crashes Paper Mario. This is 100% true. I hope you enjoy the video. If you like more videos like this, please subscribe to the channel and share more details about Paper Mario. Bye for now.